Welcome to this video lecture on the anatomy of a typical vertebra and the special features of each region of the spine. Let's dive in and explore the backbone of our body, quite literally. What are vertebrae? The spine consists of special bones called vertebrae. Vertebrae are the 33 individual bones that interlock with each other to form the spinal column. The vertebrae are numbered and divided into regions. There are 7 cervical vertebrae. 12 thoracic vertebrae, 5 lumbar vertebrae, 5 sacral vertebrae, for coccygeal vertebrae, general structure of a vertebra. Even though the vertebrae in different parts of the spine look a bit different, they all share a similar basic structure. A typical vertebra has three main parts. Vertebral body, vertebral arch 7 processes. Let's talk about their details. Vertebral body, the body is the front part of the vertebra. It carries most of the weight. As you go down the spine, the vertebral bodies get larger and thicker to support more weight. Between each pair of vertebrae, there is an intervertebral disc that acts like a cushion and connects them tightly. Vertebral arch. The vertebral arch is at the back of the vertebra. It has two pedicles on the sides and two laminae at the back, one on each side. The pedicles connect the arch to the body while the laminae form the posterior wall of the arch. The space between the vertebral arch and body is called the vertebral foramen, this is where the spinal cord passes through. When vertebrae are stacked together, all these holes line up to create the spinal canal, which protects the spinal cord. Also, when vertebrae are joined, small notches on the pedicles form intervertebral foramina, these are the openings where the spinal nerves come out. Processes of vertebrae each vertebra has seven processes sticking out from the vertebral arch. These are two transverse processes, one on each side, coming out from where the pedicle and lamina meet. There's one spinous process sticking out at the back center, this is the part you can feel as bumps along your back. These processes are points where muscles attach. Two superior articular processes pointing upward. Two inferior articular processes pointing downward. These connect with the articular processes of the vertebrae above and below to form joints that allow movement. The shape and angle of these joints change depending on the part of the spine, and that affects how much and what kind of movement is possible in each area. Regional modifications of vertebrae. Besides the basic structure shared by all vertebrae, each part of the spine has vertebrae with features that suit their function. For example, cervical vertebrae are smaller because they carry less body weight. Thoracic vertebrae have areas where the ribs attach. In the lower spine, the sacral and coccygeal vertebrae are fused into single bones, the sacrum and coccyx. Let's discuss each vertebrae in detail. Cervical vertebrae. The cervical vertebrae are the seven bones that make up the neck, numbered C1 to C7. The first two, C1, atlas, and C2, axis, are unique in structure and allow for head rotation and flex ion. The remaining five, C3 to C7, are more typical vertebrae. The first cervical vertebra, C1, is called the atlas. It has no body or spinous process. Instead, it's shaped like a ring with an anterior arch and a posterior arch. Its transverse processes are long and wide. The top articular surfaces connect with the occipital condyles of the skull, and the bottom surfaces connect with C2. The second cervical vertebra, C2, is called the axis. It's special because of a bony projection called the dens, or a dontoid process, which sticks up from the body. The dens joins with the inner aspect of the anterior arch of the atlas, and is held in place by a transverse ligament. This setup lets your head turn from side to side. Cervical vertebrae C3 to C7. These vertebrae are considered typical cervical vertebrae, featuring a vertebral body, pedicles, laminae, spinous processes, and facet joints. Transverse foramen. Cervical vertebrae have features that make them different from thoracic and lumbar vertebrae. One main feature is that each transverse process has a hole called a transverse foramen. These openings allow the vertebral arteries and veins to pass through. This is true for all cervical vertebrae except C7, where the transverse foramina usually only carry small veins, not arteries. Bifid spinous process. Cervical vertebrae C3 to C6 have bifid spinous processes. 
C7 has a single, non-bifid spinous process. Vertebra prominence. C7 has the longest spinous process among the cervical vertebrae. This prominent process is palpable at the base of the neck and is distinct from the bifid spinous processes of C2 to C6. This spinous process of C7 is also known as the vertebra prominence. Thoracic vertebrae. The thoracic spine, located in the mid-back, consists of 12 vertebrae labeled T1 through T12. Each thoracic vertebra articulates with a pair of ribs, contributing to the formation of the rib cage and the ability to breathe. They have all the features of a typical vertebra and some special features. Thoracic vertebrae are distinguished by their heart-shaped vertebral bodies. They are larger than cervical vertebrae. A typical thoracic vertebra has a long, downward-pointing spinous process that overlaps the one below it. They also have special facets where the ribs attach, costal facets on the sides of the vertebral body connect with the head of a rib. A facet on the transverse process connects with the rib's tubercle. Lumbar vertebrae. The lumbar vertebrae are the five bones in the lower back, forming the lumbar spine. They are the largest vertebrae in the vertebral column, designed to bear the weight of the torso. They are numbered L1 to L5, located below the thoracic vertebrae and above the sacrum. They have all features of a typical vertebrae and some special characteristics. Lumbar vertebrae have large, kidney-shaped vertebral bodies. The spinous process is short and thick, extending perpendicularly from the body. Transverse processes are long and slender, with changing morphology from L1 to L5. These are horizontal in L1 to L3 and inclined slightly upward in L4 and L5. The vertebral foramen is triangular in shape. They also have mammillary and accessory processes, which are small bony projections that serve as attachment sites for deep lumbosacral muscles. The mammillary process is on the superior articular process, and the accessory process is on the transverse process. Sacrum and coccyx. The sacrum and coccyx are at the base of the spine. The sacrum is a larger, triangular bone. The coccyx is the tailbone. The sacrum is formed by five fused vertebrae, S1 to S5, and connects to the hips, forming the posterior wall of the bony pelvis. The coccyx is composed of three to four fused vertebrae, located at the very end of the spine. Sacrum has the following features. The sacrum is a triangular bone, concave anteriorly and convex posteriorly. On the front, you can see transverse ridges, which are fusion lines. On the back, there's a rough ridge called the median sacral crest, formed from fused spinous processes. To the side of this ridge are the lateral sacral crests, from the transverse processes. Sacral canal, it is a hollow space that runs through the sacrum, a continuation of the vertebral canal, which ends at the sacral hiatus. Sacral foramina, are bilateral openings for the passage of spinal nerves. Auricular surfaces are lateral surfaces that articulate with the ilium, forming the sacroiliac joints. Sacral promontory, it is a noticeable ridge at the top front of the sacrum. The coccyx, or tailbone, is formed by three to five fused coccygeal vertebrae. It's a small, triangular bone located at the base of the spine, inferior to the sacrum. Coccyx has the following features. Base. The superior portion of the coccyx articulates with the sacrum through a facet on the first coccygeal vertebra. Apex. The inferior end of the coccyx, which is a distal rounded prominence. Surfaces. The coccyx has an anterior surface, a posterior surface, and two lateral surfaces. Transverse processes. The coccyx possesses rudimentary transverse processes, particularly noticeable on the first coccygeal vertebra. Coccygeal cornua. The first coccygeal vertebra also has two tubercles, the coccygeal cornua, which are vestiges of the superior articular facets. And that concludes our detailed exploration of the anatomy of a typical vertebra and the unique features of each region of the spine. Understanding these vertebral differences is crucial for appreciating spinal function, clinical diagnostics, and surgical approaches. Thank you for watching. Stay curious, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next lecture.